reflex to try that and warn me next time. <laughs> reflex immediately. <laughs> What's up guys? Back with Connor. Yo, what up? Good to see you, Patrick. Dude, good to see you too, man. It's been a year and a half since I've seen this guy. This I, miss, guy... I missed him so much. <laughs> I missed Patrick so much. I'm so glad he came to see you. Dude, him. I missed the gains, dude. Do you see this, dude? Dude, Patrick's gotten freaking big. How many pounds you gained? Uh, 10 pounds like... just this summer, 15 since you saw me. That's insane, dude. Congrats. Good gains. Thanks, boy. Uh, we're gonna hit a chest and triceps workout. It's gonna be a max eccentric focus. If you don't know what that is, you're about to find out. Let's get it. Oh, you're doing. Dude. This is the This is the Gold's Gym wall. I heard that like, if you lick it, Arnold appears. <laughs> All right, let's jump right into the workout. So we started with horizontal chest press. This is essentially just a way for us to warm up the chest, to get the blood flowing toward those muscles specifically, activating those muscles, preparing them for the rest of the workout. If you don't have a horizontal chest press machine, you can do this with just like push-ups or lightweight bench press, again, just to get those muscles activated. <laughs> then Connor wanted to see how much he could lift. He got a full four plates on there. He was just repping it out, which is insane. Uh, I think I stopped around three plates. But this is the only exercise we did that we didn't use a max eccentric focus on, which you will see in the next sets. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> All right, so here is our first max eccentric set. Connor does one normal rep, and then I press down on the negative part of the motion. The reason for this is that everyone's body is able to overcome more force on the negative part of the movement. Negative is the way down when you're going with gravity. What this does is it forces your muscles to fire at the maximum rate on the eccentric, and then you're left with the positive, which you're less strong on. The positive is the upward part of this motion. And so you reach a level of failure that is just unprecedented. Like, there's no way you've ever experienced this before unless you've done something similar. That's why Connor's failing so much. Then we switched roles and did the exact same thing. Again, I do recommend doing one normal rep first to remind your body of the range of motion before you begin the max eccentric loading. If you've never done this before, it's going to feel a little strange standing over someone and literally pressing down on them, but I promise it's worth it. One super important thing to note is that before the person begins pressing down on you, you wanna make sure you have a soft bend in your elbows. This is because you want the force that they're applying to be applied directly to your muscles and not your joints. If your arms are locked out, then it's a ton of pressure on the joints and you could even break your elbows, which obviously you don't want. But otherwise, it's a super advantageous way to train because of the amount of mechanical tension your body is put under. Your central nervous system is going to be firing like crazy, which is beneficial towards strength. And in general, eccentric damage like this is one of the keys to muscular size and muscular strength. So if you've never tried this before, definitely give it a try. All right, now we take it up a notch. So like I said, we're basically trying to reach failure the entire time by exerting the maximum amount of force possible on the way down on the eccentric. But now I exert a little bit on the positive as well. The concept here is that you're failing on the way down, I'm pressing as much as I possibly can, but then you can exert a little bit more than 135 pounds of force on the way up. So I just lightly press down on the way up to maximize the positive as well. Again, this is inducing a constant state of failure. Your nervous system is going to be going crazy. And then eventually the positive will fail, so I actually start to assist on the way up. He can no longer lift a full 135 pounds in the positive direction, but he can still do a heck of a lot more on the way down, so I'm still pressing on that eccentric, maximizing the load the entire time. Next, we apply the same concept of max eccentric loading to the lateral raise machine. The person who is assisting the person doing the work is not going to have to apply nearly as much pressure because we're just simply not as strong on this movement. But you're going to fail again on the positive, so eventually you're going to start assisting the person, raising them up and then pressing them down. Raising them up, pressing them down, because again, you're maximizing that eccentric beyond the point of positive failure. Then we switched roles and I did the exact same movement. You might be wondering, what is the advantage to doing this style of training versus just training with dumbbells? 
The whole purpose of this is that, again, you maximize the eccentric. Yes, you can go slow on the way down with a tempo to maximize the eccentric with dumbbells, but nothing is comparable to doing something like this where you are literally being maximally loaded the entire duration of a set, reaching constant failure. It's awesome. You got to try it. Next, we moved on to cable chest flies. On this one, Connor's essentially trying to keep his palms together at the front of the range of motion, and I'm literally pulling him out to the end of his range of motion. This is again maximizing the eccentric part of the movement. One important thing to note here is that it is going to be ideal that you're on at least a comparable level of strength to the person you're working out with. It doesn't have to be identical. Like I said, Connor's definitely a bit stronger than I am. But when he's at the front of his range of motion, I am fighting his chest strength with my shoulders and rear delts to maximize the eccentric. So if there was a complete lapse in the strength levels between us, it wouldn't work as well as it is for us in this example. Next we switched roles and by this time we'd really gotten the hang of how to help each other maximally load these eccentric parts of the motion. So what you can see here is that at the front of the range of motion, I'm just completely and fully contracted and his lats and rear delts are fully contracted as well because he's trying to force me out to the end of my range of motion, again maximizing that eccentric. So the more you try this, the more you're going to get the hang of it and it becomes one of just the most efficient workout types you could possibly do. and just leads to a burn that you've never felt before. Next, we moved on to cable tricep extensions, which is just about my favorite exercise when it comes to max eccentric loading. Here, Connor presses the rope down to the bottom of his range of motion and I literally bicep curl him up. This is one of those exercises where it definitely helps to have at least comparable strength because if I couldn't bicep curl him up, then it wouldn't optimize Connor's eccentric loading nearly as much. But it leads to this insane tricep pump, which is what you see Connor's got going on here. Next, we did the exact same thing with the rolls reverse. The only difference is that you'll notice the positive direction when I'm actually pressing the rope down is significantly slower for me than it was for Connor. The reason is because Connor is applying additional resistance in the positive direction, making this an advanced version of an already advanced technique. So if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend this. But in general, this is an incredibly efficient workout style. So much so that if you haven't ever done this before, you're only going to need one or two sets total per exercise because the amount of loading your muscles are going to experience is just unparalleled to anything you've ever done before. And that's the workout. Well, Connor, it's been a year and a half. You're looking aesthetic as oh. always. Sorry, bro. Got to the <laughs> tricep flex with the camera. I appreciate it, dude. Patrick's gotten a lot bigger, man. I'm impressed. Yeah, dude. Like I saw him and I was scared. I, I hope, I hope he wasn't. I don't hope he didn't have any grudges against me because I would have been scared for my life, man. So, hope you guys enjoyed the workout. If you've never heard of Connor Murphy, uh, check his channel out. Yeah, man. I appreciate the shadow, man. I need some more followers. <laughs> I, uh, I hopefully I get my channel as amazing as yours one Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Okay. Someday you'll get there. Someday. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification bell. See you guys next time. And if there was any doubt about whether Connor had gotten his gains back or not, I bet this will uh, clear it up for you. This obviously isn't photoshopped. This was taken in real time in the posing room in the Gold's Gym in Los Angeles. Um, you can see his back in the back mirror. You can obviously his front side here. I'll let you be the judge of whether you think he got his gains back or not. Let us know in the comments. If you're new to my channel, you might not know this, but last year I competed on season 10 of American Ninja Warrior, and I'm currently training for the next season of the show. But this video was taken at the peak of my bulk when I literally weighed the most that I've ever weighed, so all of this was really, really hard, but I still had to try out some tricks anyway.